This is Nemeth Estate Noka for NAJM Catalyst. I am speaking today with Dr. Troy Brennan, Executive Vice President and Chief Medical Officer of CVS Health. In this role, Troy provides oversight for the development of CVS Health's clinical and medical affairs and healthcare strategy. During the pandemic, this has included CVS Health's testing capabilities, as well as now scaling its vaccination efforts. And while acknowledging that we are still very much in the midst of a difficult phase, there is optimism as the vaccination rollout gains momentum across the nation and across the world. It is a milestone moment for sure, and we thank you today for joining us. Thanks, Troy. Thank you for having me. Many different types of organizations from healthcare systems to public health departments are providing vaccinations. What is CVS Health's role currently in the overall effort to vaccinate all Americans? Yeah, I'd say the first uh, two major tranches of vaccines that have come out uh, through the federal government's Operation Warp Speed program uh, were oriented towards healthcare workers and then to residents of uh, long term care facilities, which uh, basically divide up into skilled nursing facilities and assisted living uh, facilities. And so, as I think many healthcare workers who are on this call know, uh, large hospitals and group practices and things like that were allocated a certain amount of uh, vaccine you, uh, from the federal government through the State Department of Health. And a lot of uh, healthcare workers um, uh, have been vaccinated. There's still a lot of healthcare workers who've not been vaccinated. Uh, people who were not affiliated with large centers and things like that are now trying to get access to Department of Health um, uh, provisions and places where the Department of Health is providing vaccinations. But that healthcare worker part is not something that we at CVS were involved in, where we took responsibility along with Walgreens, you know, the other major uh, retail pharmacy chain, uh, was to go out and do clinics at long-term care facilities and get those people vaccinated. So uh, Operation Warp Speed contacted the states and through the states got in contact with all of the over 40,000 uh, institutions that might be considered uh, skilled nursing facilities or long-term care um, and um, uh, basically took a census and identified those individuals. And then they could either work with Walgreens or CVS uh, and individual facilities chose which they were going to work with. And then uh, we've been basically working with them, starting with the skilled nursing facilities um, and uh, setting up clinics with the plan being that we would be out to each skilled nursing facility or uh, assisted living facility three times, one for a first dose, a second for a second dose, and a third basically for cleanup of individuals who either had missed one of their doses or who had gotten the first dose on uh, the second visit. So we're in the midst of that um, uh, right now. And, um, you know, we're plan is to complete that by uh, mid-February. Different states started um, at different times, but as of January 20th, we had distributed just over a million uh, vaccinations in the skilled nursing facilities and about 500,000 vaccinations in the assisted living facilities. And every state will be complete with our first round in the skilled nursing facilities on January 25th. Almost all the states are completed by now in that first round for the skilled nursing facilities. And then the assisted living facilities are trailing behind that because they started later, uh, but um, you know we'll be finishing them up, um, as I suggested, by mid to late February. So that's basically what our role is in this portion of Operation Warp Speed. Does that prompt any questions? Let's double click on, on the, the long-term care facilities. What have been some of the um, highlights or things that you found went better than planned? And what were some of the challenges that you hadn't anticipated and how did you overcome them? I think you know it, we set out a plan uh, with each state um, and said this is what our schedule looks like, and we have stayed on that schedule pretty much uh, like clockwork. We have very few um, uh, uh, cancellations. Um, sometimes we have difficulty getting in touch on the initial contact with a skilled nursing facility or a long-term care facility. Um, and as a result of that, some uh, clinics have been delayed, but it's a very, very small portion. So overall, 
things have gone very well. I think people like to get it done faster, but to some extent we were uh, dependent on the state's decisions about when they would activate the program. The initial activations that we got were relatively sort of early, just a week after the uh, vaccine was available. On the 21st, for example, in several states we started, but some uh, states have waited um, even to, into mid-January before they've been activating their assisted living facilities. So we can only go as fast as the states are um, activating the facilities. But by and large, things have gone well. The teams have been learning while they're out there. So they are making more calls beforehand, getting more specific about who's going to be vaccinated because we're vaccinating both the residents and any workers who are interested in getting vaccinated. And um, also, um, you know, sort of uh, coming up with um, on the fly uh, procedures for the best way to sort of efficiently go through a skilled nursing facility. For example, one thing that they've been doing is that they find that the skilled nursing facilities tell them that the people in the dementia ward may be brighter in the morning. So go, they go there first uh, thing to be able to get those residents. But, you know, it's a, it's a great process because the teams are learning and sharing that information. And as a result, we're getting more efficient. We did find when we first began that, you know, we we're getting probably less than 50% of the workers interested in vaccination, but there is a process where people are sort of observing what happens to uh, their colleagues after they've been vaccinated and they're more willing on a second round to get vaccinated. So no, all good in that regard. From our point of view, it's been a very gratifying program. People want, you know, we're in the stage right now where everybody wants everything to go sort of as quickly as possible. And people are worried about sort of taking blame for not moving as quickly as possible. So there's a lot of sturm und drang associated with it. But from our point of view, it was a schedule, you know, there's a schedule of events and we're sticking to that schedule and it's going very, very well. You mentioned uh, some hesitancy around uh, taking the vaccine amongst the employees of these organizations. Other than uh, seeing their colleagues uh, get the vaccine and, and have a positive experience, have the, has the CVS team or the long-term care facilities that you're working with taken any other uh, specific tactical actions to address vaccine hesitancy? Well, in this particular round, we're relatively sort of dependent on the skilled nursing facilities to do that. And so there are large chains of skilled nursing facilities, and those organizations have been assiduous about uh, education for their um, uh, workers. And I think, you know, you get a, a higher rate of uh, vaccination in, in those facilities. But I think, you know, the, the vaccine hesitancy issues are going to come to the fore as we get uh, more vaccine available, you know, sort of March, April is the time period where we're really going to be facing that, that issue. And um, I would say from point of view of our company, we have a broad public relations campaign that we'll be kicking off to try to tell people and educate people about what the values are associated with this vaccination. You know, now we're getting up into the millions of people. Soon we'll be in the tens, I think we're in the tens of millions of Americans who have been vaccinated. So, you know, it's, it's less and less of something that uh, was a relatively sort of rare event and more and more of something that's occurring on a mass basis. And I think that in general makes people um, um, uh, excited. The metaphor right now is where can I get a vaccine? I'm very eager to get a vaccine, but ra relatively rapidly as more vaccine becomes available, um, not soon enough, of course, but relatively rapidly, it'll become, uh, what are we gonna do to get these people who haven't been vaccinated, vaccinated yet? But with regard to the workers in the skilled nursing facilities, that's been pretty much up to the uh, uh, SNF um, owners. We've mentioned a few times, Troy, the urgency to increase the pace and scale of the, of the vaccine rollout. From your perspective, what are the specific tactics necessary uh, across all of these key stakeholders, government, public sector, private sector, uh, to, to roll out most effectively at, at the pace required? Well, the big issue is really the availability of the vaccine. You know, uh, in the day-to-day, -day, in the hour-to-hour, -hour, in the minute-to-minute, -minute, and especially if you're, you know, working for a state or you're a politician, you've got the teachers or you've got the transport workers or you've got the nurses, all kinds of people who are your constituencies who are very interested in getting vaccinated and saying, 
you know, sort of why I can't get it. And uh, in our country, it's a federal system. And so we always knew that there was going to be uh, a, a very much a sort of state by state approach and that those state by state uh, approaches were going to vary, both in terms of sort of who was being designated to be in line from the point of view of uh, essential or essential frontline workers, as well as uh, what kind of age and comorbidity uh, criteria people were going to be using. So we've adapted to that um, and are prepared to uh, address that as we become more of a mass vaccinator, putting vaccine into our stores and running vaccine clinics there. But I think that, you know, uh, people lose sight of the big issue. And the big issue is, you know, uh, it's basically a sort of, from my point of view, a biomedical miracle that we've got this vaccine available so early and uh, we've got limited number of doses. And, um, you know, we, we need to gear up the manufacturing. Um, and I think that the companies and the government is moving as fast as they can on that, get some more vaccines approved and get more vaccine into the environment. So, you know, there, there's no doubt that there's going to be a lot of sort of confusion and near chaos as you start this kind of rollout over the first couple months. But um, I think, you know, once the vaccine is available, uh, and we get the uh, vaccine out into more typical and convenient locations where people expect it, that um, we're going to rapidly get um, a large number of people vaccinated. And then we're going to be figuring out how to get those who are vaccine hesitant um, uh, done. What advice do you have for other healthcare executives and leaders across the world as countries roll out their own vaccination plans? Um, my overall advice, um, and I know that this is difficult from a political point of view, is to keep it simple. Um, I would say get it to the most convenient locations and get it with the most simple criteria available and, um, and move rapid and, and put an emphasis on moving rapidly because, you know, we're in the situation right now where uh, we've got certain other variants that are proving to be more prevalent in the population. They look as though they may be much more uh, infectious than um, previous variants were. Um, and we can see that be a real driver in terms of morbidity and uh, mortality. So we're racing to get remove vectors from the environment. You remove a vector by either them having been infected or getting the vaccine. And the vaccine is what we're trying to do. So my recommendation is very simple age criteria and get it out uh, to uh, convenient locations as quickly as possible. Now we do, you know, that might be self-serving. We do want to provide um, a vaccine um, in our stores and we're beginning to open stores um, uh, as we work with individual states about how they want to uh, distribute it. But when you look at the approach to this uh, from a point of view of sort of behavioral economics, for example, the critical criteria for people doing things is convenience. and that's basically sort of what the retail pharmacies um, uh, have to offer. So, you know, we think that we can gear up to do 20 to 30, even more than that million uh, vaccinations a month. And I think that the other major retailers could be in for the same number. So just relying on the retailers, you would have a very strong distribution strategy. And we do find that our stores, and I think this is probably true of other retailers, are well distributed um, uh, in terms of covering both places that have a high social vulnerability index and those that have a low so social vulnerability index. But there will be other places where there are uh, basically pharmacy deserts. And then we and others are making plans about how we open up uh, vaccination clinics um, in those areas. And I know that the states are thinking about those things as well. So my overall advice is make it convenient and make it simple. I appreciate the, uh, the, the transparency and the, the candidness, Troy. What is a recent win uh, that you can share with us from the last few weeks as it relates to vaccination efforts? Well, I, you know, as I said, uh, we're over halfway through what will eventually be more than 100,000 visits to individual facilities to take care of our most vulnerable. Um, and um, I think that's a, and again, I don't want to sound like I'm sort of tooting our own horn, but I think that's an, a tremendous sort of public health uh, accomplishment over a two to two and a half month period of time to be able to get all of these people vaccinated 
who could not get out to get the vaccinations um, um, themselves and run these individual clinics. We're, we're in the assisted living facilities that are as small as sort of four to five people, you know, uh, basically sort of delivering um, uh, the vaccination there. So, you know, people, the headlines are, you know, not moving fast enough, have to move faster. This is not good. But underneath those headlines is that there's a lot of very vulnerable people uh, who are getting the protection from the vaccine sort of as we talk. And we'll be finished with that, um, you know, in, um, over the course of the next month, um, really. So that I think that's a real um, accomplishment. I think we've got a lot of healthcare workers vaccinated thanks to the work that individual uh, hospitals and systems have done. And I think as I talk to my friends, in healthcare institutions around the company, you know, that's a tremendous game changer. You know, the word uh, that um, people use uh, most often is that, you know, their teams could not have continued to sort of function as they were, but that the uh, uh, vaccine has been a real godsend for their staff. And I think that is a critical public health victory for us because, you know, with this virus spreading, the most, most important thing has been, can we keep our hospital infrastructure in shape. And it can't just be based on the courage of individuals. Having this vaccine available and making sure people can feel like they can go to work without putting themselves and their families at risk for dying of a, of a coronavirus infection is uh, something that's really tremendous. So, you know, I, 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 I tend to sort of see the good aspects of what's going on. Of course, we need to move faster, but people aren't sort of stopping and saying, you know, if you had told me that we were going to have 20 million people in this country vaccinated, including most of the healthcare workers and um, uh, most of the people in skilled nursing facilities and long-term care facilities by the end of January, 2021, if you had told me that a year ago, I'd say that's the most foolish thing I've ever heard. Uh, there's no way that that's gonna be possible. And I think people sort of overlook the fact about how fast this whole thing has moved and, and really how fast we're moving right now. I, uh, I share your philosophy about celebrating the successes uh, and, and marking these, uh, these important milestones. Troy, thank you so much for speaking with NEJM Catalyst today. Thank you for having me, I appreciate it.